Hello and welcome to Box. Today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing this Creality Ender 3 S1 3D printer. The Ender 3 is a really good go-to all-round startup printer. It's not necessarily based on your skill level, but more on how easy it is to use and understand. It's one of the best stepping stones into developing your 3D printing skills from the ground level. It's not insanely expensive to buy, it's easy to set up and print within a short space of time, and it's incredibly fun to experiment with different builds once you get confident with it. Though despite all of the versions before it, I feel that Creality has finally made a breakthrough here, creating something that practically sets itself going without delicate manual balancing, as well as having an easier filament loading and extruding system, letting you get straight into printing without getting stuck on the setup stage. As someone who has the bare minimum experience of using a 3D printer in the past, I'll get that first-hand experience of seeing just how beginner-friendly this printer can be, from setup right through to completing my first print. So let's see just how easy this printer is to use. To start off, let's take a look at the box. All the accessories and various parts are found on the top layer inside, whereas the bottom houses the main printer itself. Everything you need comes in this one bag, broken down into individually wrapped and helpfully labelled packets of screws and spare parts. There are a lot of accessories, but what you get here is the power cord, a handful of adjustment tools such as a set of Allen keys, a small screwdriver and a couple of wrenches, some cleanup tools like this scraper, small clippers and a nozzle pipe, and finally an SD card and card reader. There's also a handful of spares and small options optional parts just in case you want to swap things up, but mainly to keep things going without worrying about ordering more spare parts years later. One of the crucial elements to starting a print is the filament. Now you do get enough in the box to let you try it out straight away, but it's always great to find the right filament for what you want to make to get the best results. I'll be using the Sunlu 1.75mm PLA filament, which is great for a range of designs as it's on a universal spool size and gives you a pretty smooth, consistent finish. But no matter what type of print you have in mind, the Ender 3 S1 is compatible with multiple filament types, including PLA, TPU, PETG and ABS, so you don't have to worry about being confined to a specific type or brand. Looking at all the parts laid out, setting it up can seem a little daunting, but it's not as complicated as you think. In fact, there are only six steps to go through. The SD card that comes with it does have everything you need to do a few test prints right away. And if you plug it into the PC, it has an easy to follow video guide in case you get stuck putting it together, which I always find is easier to follow than written instructions. Luckily, the base and mainframe are already pre-assembled, so all you need to do is attach the frame to the base using the Allen keys and screws provided. Now it's just a case of attaching all the small parts, such as fitting the extruder to the x-axis arm on the mainframe, slotting the arm for the spool into the top of the frame which just clicks into place, screwing the cradle for the display on the side of the base and slotting the screen into the holder. With everything in place, all that's left to do is plug in all of the wires from the frame into the x, y and z points on the base, making sure the extruder and filament dispenser is attached and plugging in the power cable before everything is ready to get started. These steps are a little fiddly and unless you're confident in doing so, I'd probably ask for a little bit of help when turning the whole machine on its side to screw everything together. But other than that, the whole process took as little as 20 minutes to put it together. Taking a look at the printer as a whole, it's a nice tidy unit. It's one of the cleanest designs that I've seen yet in the Ender 3 range and it fits neatly beside my PC on the desk without taking up too much room. The printer itself measures at 622mm high, 453mm wide and 487mm deep. For the available print space, you have a 220 by 220 by 270 mm space to work with, which is great for a whole multitude of designs, from single prints to printing parts for a bigger creation. The print platform is made up of a solid steel sheet with a magnetic top that pulls away and sticks back down firmly, allowing for easy removal for cleaning or flexing to remove stubborn prints. There's an SD slot and USB-C connector on the front for multiple ways of loading print files onto the machine, and there's even a small drawer on the right perfect for storing any accessories or spares with the machine. Along the right hand side you get this neat little display with just one control knob to navigate the menus. I much prefer the full screen digital display here, it's bright enough to see clearly, full of simple commands with easy translatable icons, and it's got all the stats information I need to keep an eye on at the bottom of the main menu at all times. Turning it on with the switch at the back, it's now ready to start your first print. 
Now the instructions do state that it does need to be leveled and prepared before use. Amazingly, you don't need to go through any frustrating manual leveling processes here. It has automatic bed leveling using CR Touch tech. It measures the height and width of the space and calculates the print based on the 16 points on the print bed. All I had to do was initiate it within the prepare menu and it set off doing the hard work for me. Now there are four dials on the corners underneath the print bed if you prefer to manually level it yourself, but for a beginner, I found this much easier to get started. Now the next step I had a little problem with. The nozzle needs to be offset in order to set a paper's width above the print bed, completing the levelling process. I may have miscalculated just a bit, rushing into the next step and causing a blemish on the magnetic sheet. As frustrating as it is to make mistakes so early on, at least it was easy enough to correct by simply going back into the menu and adjusting the position slightly. I suppose it goes to show that carefully reading the instructions can go a long way. Adding to the whole beginner-friendly vibe, the SD card that comes with it has all the software and assets that you need to try it out without searching the internet first. Of course, if you want an element of surprise, you can just print one of the preloaded models from the SD card directly. But to get a better idea on what you want to do, inserting the SD card and installing the Creality slicing software lets you understand and hone the process much quicker. I know there are many other software options out there to choose from, and from what I can tell, the most popular seems to be Cura. But having access to the specially designed Creality software that's built to work best with your machine makes the printing process straightforward. I was able to choose the exact model that I had, and it pre-filled all the information about it for me to ensure a perfect print every time. Opening the software, there's this great 3D example of what your print will look like before you set it going, which is essential when printing designs downloading from websites, or even trying out your own design that you've built from scratch. I love being able to move it about on the plate, alter the size, and most importantly, slice it and get an estimated print time before setting it to print. It also helpfully generates and saves the G-code to the SD card for a no-hassle, plug-and-play printing within minutes. With the nozzle and print bed preheated and my selected print loaded up, I'm ready to get started and see how well it does. The cat print roughly took four hours overall, and as my first attempt, I'm very pleased with the results. The texture is beautifully smooth, and I can definitely see the results that the high precision axis and dual gear sprite extruder puts in. The layers are hardly noticeable, making it a little less obvious that it's a 3D print. It did leave some little wispy filament flyaways, but these just brush away easy enough. I love the outcome in general, and even though I'm not sure if this is down to using a default preloaded print, or if it's just the result of the high quality that I can come to expect from this printer, I feel like I'd need to try it out a few more times to really get to know what it's capable of. Now I know the Creality Slicer works fine, but as most seem to prefer alternate software like Cura, I thought it was definitely worth a try. I couldn't select my exact printer model from the list, so this might not have a completely accurate settings input. I did alter the print bed size as I had that information to hand, but as I'm just testing it out as I go, I definitely need to take some time learning this software to get the best out of it. I downloaded another small print from a site called Thangs 3 d and chose this little chair designed by Rhythm Mega Para from the community page. Apart from appeasing my love for smaller versions of bigger things, I thought it would be a good test for print bed temperature to see how well it sticks, and to see how well it builds something with a delicate frame. It says the print should take about 2 hours and 20 minutes, so let's leave it printing and come back later to see how well it copes. Unfortunately, there was an incident and the whole print slipped from the bed, forcing me to stop the whole thing. Assuming that the problem is that it's having trouble fixing firmly enough to the print bed as it gets bigger, I thought I'd correct it by upping the bed temperature by 20 degrees for a firmer hold. Setting the print going once more, let's see how far it gets this time. The 
the second attempt easily surpassed the first this time around. Unfortunately, I didn't quite think through the placement of the model on the print bed, and realising that there would be no support for the second set of legs, I painfully watched as it attempted to build the print onto nothing. I could have fixed this easily if I'd just added a few supports, not realising this is something that the program doesn't add automatically, and that I would need to add them myself within the print beforehand. But in the end, this iteration wasn't too bad, and though I still have a lot to learn, I still thought this print came out pretty clean despite its obvious flaws on my part. As sad as it was to see my second attempt go wrong so early on, that's kind of the fun of printing. Though the printer offers a lot of help like the smart filament feeder to stop any accidents when I run out of filament, and the auto levelling to get things right without struggle, I felt I still had plenty of control and flexibility to attempt to print wild designs to my heart's content. I still think it's a brilliant machine, both for those starting out and creators who just want a good simple machine that prints well. It's a solid, fixed unit designed to use it straight out of the box best suited to printing fun designs and generally getting used to what a 3D printer can achieve. You couldn't really take it apart and upgrade certain parts of it when you finally reached its potential limits, and when you're ready for more complex prints, it would be much better just to upgrade to an intermediate printer. But for what it is, I loved how easy it is to understand and get started. Getting to know the terminology and basic rules of printing didn't require hours of research. It handed me everything I needed to know to make the next steps and fix any problems that arose when it happened. All I can say from my first experience with the Ender 3 S1 is how important it is to take your time, read each step and warning carefully, and let it show you what it can make with its pre-built models first, before jumping into crazy projects. For the more advanced creators out there, this is a beautiful plug and play tool. It's low cost, versatile in regards to filament types and connection methods, and has some handy features that jump over some of the well-known annoying aspects of 3D printing to get what you want in a much more efficient way. So what are your thoughts on the Creality Ender 3 S1? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, Thanks for watching.